Hi everybody and welcome to another piano video here at the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. My name is Stu Harrison and today we're talking about digital pianos, their longevity, their durability, and what are the common parts in a digital piano that tend to fail over time. If you are shopping for a digital piano, I would say this is really useful information to know because some people have absolutely no idea what the expectation is in terms of how long their digital piano investment is likely to last. So we hope to help answer some of that uh, today uh, we're going to be talking about a variety of price points, but we aren't focusing this on any specific brand or model. These are just general concepts that are great to keep in mind when you are considering a piano and obviously specifically a digital piano. If it's the first time that you've found us here on the channel, we would really love for you to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you find this information useful and you think you'd like to hear more about pianos generally. We're always coming out with new videos. So without further ado, let's dive right in to digital pianos and how long they last right away. So I'll start the video out by saying that this is a video that really didn't have much relevance say 10 years ago. And the reason I say that is only a very small percentage of the buying population back then would have been looking at a digital piano as a long-term purchase. Professionals would be worried about how long a digital piano would last for obvious reasons. Funds are limited and you want to invest in something that you're going to be able to use in a professional setting for a long period of time. And a few hobbyist players, I would even call them more enthusiast players, somebody who's really excited about digital technology, was investing in home digital pianos at a high level 10, 15 years ago. But that was a very small slice of the population that is now buying digital pianos with the thought that maybe this is the only type of piano that they'll ever own, which is just a complete paradigm shift. And this has happened for a few reasons. Um, I think budgets have come down as the quality of the sound out of a digital piano has come up to meet it. Um, but I also think that there are a number of playing situations as a homeowner where an acoustic piano simply isn't practical. And we talk about this in a variety of videos all the time. And so, how long digital pianos last is a more pertinent question today than it ever has been at any point in history of the instrument, which is you know, probably what, 40, 50 years at this point that, that we could say that we've had digital pianos of some type, of some nature uh, on the market. Digital pianos do not last forever and they are not infinitely repairable forever unless you really want to go out of your way and MacGyver some solutions after parts uh, stop being in stock. So regardless of whether you're buying an entry-level instrument or a really high-end instrument, your digital piano at some point is simply not going to function the way it was uh, when you first bought it, and you're gonna get to a point where it can't be repaired anymore, or the economics no longer make sense to repair that. The more expensive the instrument, you definitely get a longer shelf life out of those instruments. We're gonna discuss why that is, but every single one of them has a very specific lifespan on it within a range and depending on how you use it. And that's just totally different than somebody who buys an acoustic piano. An acoustic piano is forever repairable. You may get to a point where the economics no longer are justifiable, but that doesn't mean that it's not repairable. With a lot of digital pianos, you actually do get to the point where you simply can't get the motherboard anymore. It's out of stock, nobody makes it. You can't get the sensor anymore because it was an odd type that was uh, you know, discontinued forever ago. Uh, the amplifier no longer can be repaired uh, and you can't find something that's exactly the right type or the, or the jack connection or you name it. Uh, at some point, you're gonna run into a situation where the part just simply can't uh, be replaced. So let's move on to the parts of the instrument that actually do fail. At the top of the list has to be action. And action fails uh, or certainly degrades uh, for the most obvious of reason, which is that it's the thing getting pummeled over and over and over and over and over again. I mean, just in a single setting, you could be pressing a key thousands of times if you're playing it over the course of two or three hours easily. And of course you multiply this by weeks, months, and years, and you've got a point, a mechanical point on the instrument uh, that is just enduring lots of force, lots of uh, you know, um, yeah, impact, 
uh, and at some point they start wearing down. Moving on to the next major fail point of a keyboard, which tends to be its motherboard. Uh, now the motherboard, uh, and I'm going to include the sensor in this, so let's call it the digital electronic components. Uh, this is something uh, which is fairly unpredictable, um, but we do find that if there's anything that tends to fail regardless of the level of use, it is these sensors and these motherboards, and that tends to be at a very low percentage. Now, most manufacturers are gonna have some type of a fail rate on their electronics of uh, anywhere from like a half percent up to maybe one and a half, two percent, and that tends to be the industry average. But when it does happen, there's really nothing to be done other than replacing those components. And as long as you are able to uh, get in touch with the manufacturer within a reasonable amount of time, um, after buying the instrument, good chance you're going to be able to get that replaced. Even if you have to pay for the part if it's out of warranty, usually five, six, seven years after that model is discontinued, there's some spare part somewhere. Even if you hop on eBay, you can generally find it if it's within a reasonable amount of time. But if it's past that point, this is a big one because once the motherboard is gone and it can't be replaced, the instrument is essentially useless. There's really not a whole lot you can do um, within economically reasonable means to rescue a digital piano once the main board uh, goes. Now sensors are another one that tend to go, and sensors uh, are subject to quite a bit of impact, but most of the impact on a key is cushioned um, by other, uh, other points. So the sensor does get some pressure, but it's certainly not what is cushioning the major blow of the key being pressed down. Uh, but the sensor is still a point that fails. Now individual sensors often can be replaced, especially in, in higher level actions. In lower level actions, sometimes it's an entire sensor strip or it's done in sections. So that again falls into the same category as the uh, motherboard. As long as it's in stock, you can replace it, but there's always gonna be this wild card failure rate of something in and around the 1% range. And this is, as much just a roll of the dice as it is anything that you could or couldn't do as an owner uh, to better protect that electronics. Aside from making sure the humidity is kind of reasonable and it's not in the middle of a whole bunch of dust. I mean, that, that part is true. But other than that, it's a little bit luck. The third one is totally preventable, but I can't tell you the number of times where this has wound up uh, really compromising somebody's quality of ownership or resulting in an instrument that they just gave up on, which is busted jacks. There's all sorts of jacks like the headphone jack, the pedal jack, the MIDI jack, USB jack um, that connects to these instruments. And these need to be treated with some care. Um, what happens quite frequently, especially if the instrument is undergoing a high level of use, is those jacks, the, either the physical mount points inside the instrument will break or loosen up and the jack kind of falls into the instrument. Um, but in other cases, the actual uh, electronic connections um, also break, and which means that the jack needs to be re-soldered on. Uh, but in some cases, there's actual breakage beyond just the solder point, uh, which is very difficult to replace. So it's a common fail point and if you've got young kids using these instruments, what's really good to keep in mind is that especially for the headphone jacks, be somewhat gentle when you are pulling these uh, in and out, especially if it's gonna be a jack that gets used several hundred times. These things do loosen up, they can break, uh, and you would be surprised at the functionality that some of these jacks um, essentially deprive you of once they're not working. I've had a headphone jack bust uh, that basically defeated the local speakers uh, because the machine thought that the headphone uh, jack was occupied and that triggered the circuit that killed the local speakers and had to get a repair person in to do that. Sometimes these repairs, especially if they're out of warranty, can get quite costly um, since digital piano repair people aren't a dime a dozen. So jacks, another one to keep in mind. Down to our last few, amplifiers and speakers. Speakers are always going to be a wear component, but they tend to last a very long time. In fact, speakers themselves are likely to be one of the longest lasting parts of any digital piano. 
Um, they're not a particularly complex component, and as long as the speaker hasn't been overdriven, you can find speakers that are decades and decades and decades and decades old, even relatively low quality ones, that still function exactly the way they're supposed to. Um, but the amplifier that's attached to it, on the other hand, can be a very different story. If you are constantly driving the amplifier, leaving the amplifier on for extended periods of time, there is always the chance that you are going to blow the amplifier, burn the amplifier out. Uh, now, I am not a giant audiophile person that could build my own amplifier, but I have seen this happen, and I know that if you are pushing a digital piano sort of in the 90%, 100% of its uh, possible volume range all the time, there is going to be a very high chance that that amplifier just simply doesn't make it to the end of its intended lifespan. It's just like a jet engine. You can rev it up to 100% or 110% uh, you know, of its maximum thrust, but you don't want to do that for very long because really the sweet spot is kind of somewhere in the 70-80% range. So that is something that's well within your control. If you need an instrument that's going to be that loud, make sure you buy something that's giving you the volume you want, set to only around 70 or 80%. That way you're really going to get uh, the full length of the amplifier. So those are the most common things in a digital piano that are likely to fail. And when you're looking at how long this is going to give you, like I said, for beginner pianos, Action is likely to be uh, your biggest uh, um, uh, failure point. Uh, as you get up into the higher levels of instruments, it's actually more likely to be uh, electronics that do because your action is going to last three, four, five times longer than in a, in a beginner uh, digital piano. What does this work out into years? Well, what we've seen is for entry level digital pianos, you know, anywhere from three to six, seven years. Uh, for mid range, you could expect five to 10. And for the very, very best digital pianos out there right now, some of the hybrids uh, from Yamaha, Kawai, or Roland, uh, you could potentially be looking at 10 to 15 years of treble free use for these digital pianos. So for those of you looking at a digital piano right now, you're in the market, you're thinking about this, and longevity is on your mind, or maybe it's even resale, because of course this information is just as pertinent to used digital piano shoppers, I hope you found this video helpful. Now, if it is the first time that you have found us here on YouTube, we would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, because we'd love to have you back in our community commenting, reading the comments, uh, you know, soaking everything up from these videos that there is to be soaked up, enjoying uh, coming back, even suggesting other videos. Uh, this is a community. We really uh, love the dialogue that occurs around this community. We'd love to have you back. So please do so. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Marion Pianos on YouTube, and we'll see you again soon.